Serena and if you have seen any of my previous videos you know that I am an SLP assistant so today I'm going to be sharing with you all what I think are the pros and cons to being an assistant. So I am an SLPA and right now I currently work in a school setting and before that I worked for early intervention so I would go to the homes and I would offer speech therapy services to families. And now I work at different schools and I provide services inside of the school setting. So, and now I work at the schools and I provide services outside of the classroom. I pull um, students out of their classroom and I work with them one-on-one -on -one or in the group setting, whatever is needed. So I have been doing this for about four years and with just that background in two different settings, I can tell you the pros and cons are pretty much the same. And I'm going to be starting off with the cons because I want to end on a good note and I want you all to know that speech language pathology is very much my passion. I enjoy what I do. I like doing the direct therapy, but I'll get into that in just a second. The number one con that comes to my mind when I think about cons um, of my job is because you are the assistant, you will be the one doing a majority of the therapy, if not all of the speech therapy. So that could be a con because your caseload can be really high. I mean, it just depends on where you're coming from, what you're used to, right? But when I did early intervention, I had two roles. I was the service coordinator and my other title was the SLP assistant. So I did do all of the therapy for my SLP supervisor as I do now. Um, I will say the school setting is a lot higher than what I was used to coming from early intervention, but this being my third year in the school setting, I'm used to it. Like, I'm, it it's pretty fast paced, but I will say because you're the assistant, it's strictly therapy. Like you're the one who ends up with, you know, these caseloads of 75, 80, sometimes 90 kids. It's, it varies, right? But it's completely on you now. Like it's up to you to make that schedule and you to get those services to the kids, right? Another con is that, again, as the assistant, you will be given additional tasks on top of your therapy, right? So you're the assistant to your SOP. So if she cannot take on something or if it's a little bit too much for her, she will likely be asking you, her assistant, to take that on, right? So sometimes if she can't attend an ARD meeting, for example, or if she's going to be out, you're going to have to make that up as the speech assistant. And that's something you have to keep in mind when you are going into this job because a lot of people don't like to be an assistant or don't want to have to answer to somebody else, but that's what it is. <laughs> you're someone's assistant, right? They're the ones who take care of only so much work and then you're going to take on the additional work, if that makes sense. Another big con to me personally is the behavior and everything around behavior that comes with being an SLPA, whether you are in early intervention, whether you're in home health, whether you're in a school setting, a clinic, you have 30 minutes to work with this client and behavior is a big thing. Um, some people may just interject, you know, they're going to ask you questions that are not even related to the speech and language activity. They're going to be speaking over you. They're going to act out some of the kids. They're going. It's a lot to take on in 30 minutes. So I guess not necessarily behavior, but the fact that it's 30 window time frames, you don't have all this time. Um, a lot of the services that I provide are in 30 minutes. In early intervention, not so much. I would do about an hour um, for a visit. So that was a little bit different, but whether it's 30 minutes or an hour, the point is you only have this time to work on speech and language activities, right? And speech and language is so broad. Like that's why I liked early intervention because you're able to tell the families what to practice at home versus at the school level in my setting, I can't do that. I mean, I can speak with the family if I want and I can speak with the teachers as well, but um, essentially you're only given that small time frame to knock all of these activities out, to address all of these goals. And then if it's a group setting, it's even harder to address everybody's goals in 30 minutes or in an hour, right? So it's a lot to do in 30 minutes. Another con, I kind of touched on this already, but it's the fact that you're an assistant and you need someone supervising over you. So if there's not an SLP, I guess, available at, in your workspace, like you're not gonna get the job. They're not even gonna consider it an SLPA. Or if you have an SLP supervisor who decides it's time for her to leave, time for her to retire, time for her to try something different, you're left <laughs> just there. You like by law or by like, according to your license and like all the 
rules around it, you cannot work without a supervising SLP. Sure, you may have your supervisors who look over both of you or, you know, who give you other tasks to do, but your SLP supervisor is the one, like she's very much needed for you to have your job. So that could be a con because you have to entirely depend on this person, you know, to essentially keep your job. I have known people who um, lose their SLP supervisor and they're stuck. They cannot work. They cannot provide services until someone else comes in and fills in that supervisor role. You know what I mean? You can't do anything about it. It's just, it is what it is. Another big con is that you only have kind of like limited knowledge. As an SLPA, you only learn so much. Um, or your degree as opposed to the SLP you know they know so much more about swallowing they know so much more about just other realms around speech and language that you probably don't know much about I have learned a lot over the years because you know just from experience but I am in no way in a position to ever diagnose right I can't tell families that something is wrong in the area of swallowing like that is not my thing that's not my role it's not what i studied and i'm not qualified for it so as an slpa you're very restricted as to kind of what you can work with i would say the majority of your work is language and articulation um you know and that can get very deep into wh questions you can do grammatical sentences but essentially like you're really just working on that if there's someone who has a swallowing disorder or something more you cannot provide services to that person you're kind of limited as to what you can do as an SLPA now I'm going to move into the pros which I'm super excited about because as I mentioned this is my passion I completely love what I do so the number one thing in my opinion that I think is a huge pro is I do not do paperwork um sure i'm limited to in the school setting i do progress reports and early intervention i had to write my summary or like a note at the very end to turn in to my boss but for the most part i am not doing those evaluations i'm not doing the paperwork for reads i'm not contacting parents i'm not doing any of that i'm doing what i like i'm doing the direct therapy so that's a huge pro you're not dealing with all that paperwork that an slp would have to do you're doing all the fun stuff you're doing the games you're doing um the activities you're targeting all these goals you're being creative on how to target these goals which i think is completely the fun part i love being creative and i love seeing okay if this person isn't getting it um on paper then maybe we needed to do it like a more physical activity to see if that works if they're not getting it in a more physical activity okay then maybe i can draw it out maybe I can try it this way so that's the part that i love um I, it's why i stay in the position that i am because i don't want to have to do all of that stuff and meet deadlines with paperwork and have to call people back and forth that's not what i went to school for you the know second thing that i consider a pro in my work is that i do have my supervisor while i mentioned that it's a con because you have to be doing you know as they tell you to i think it's a pro because if you have questions about anything speech related you know this is a professional who's going to help you it's not like you can just go to your boss and expect them to know if they don't have a degree in speech therapy you know so for example um your boss could be you know super smart in the special education area but you're not necessarily going to ask her about what a goal might mean because she might not know does that make sense like your supervisor is the professional she's the one giving you these goals and giving you this caseload like any question you have around a student around a kid or anything because they did it the evaluation you're able to go to them and be like hey what do you think about this hey i saw so and so doing this what do you think about it so i really love that relationship that i have with my supervisor because she again she's the professional she's able to break things down to me and because she has that additional education she's able to tell me oh did you know this this and this did you know this leads to this or they're able to throw in all of their knowledge and give it, you know, hand it over to you. So I love that. Having your SLP supervisor is extremely helpful when you just have questions about anything or if you want to know more about something. The third pro to being an SLP assistant is the fact that you're required to have these um, indirect observations and these direct observations with your supervising SLP. I think that's helpful because you are doing those observations and you're getting feedback consistently from your supervising SOP. She's giving you feedback on what you can do better next time. She's giving you feedback on what you did right, what you did wrong. So it's 
like you're always learning you know like there's always room for growth right so you're supervising sop consistently watching over you maybe bad to some people i think that's really really good because you're consistently learning the last pro as an slpa is that you get to make your own schedule kind of i'm gonna say that but not emphasize on it that's why it's my last pro because again depending on your setting um you either have to clock in at a certain time you have to leave at a certain time so it, it just varies depending on where you're at who your supervisor is how they like things to go um but for the most part you're giving a caseload right and you're able to decide okay i want to group these three to four kids together i want to see this kid individually because they might need more help you're completely able to do it all on your own if you want to see the articulation kids first or if you want to see the language kids who are working on wh questions maybe you want to see the kids who are working on fluency and do some stuttering activities with them it's completely up to you which i think is awesome there's no one here to tell you this is your schedule follow it just like this i remember in early intervention i did have to see you know so many people in a day or a week or a month but again it was up to me on what time i wanted to see them um, and I kind of based that off their location. If these two homes were together, I'm going to try to see these two kids. You're, you have that flexibility to kind of do what you want with your caseload and group people together and see them at this time. It's completely up to you. So I really like that because it makes me feel like I have more control. And it's, again, not just someone saying, here's your schedule, follow it at this time. So those are all of my pros and cons. I hope you guys agree. And if you think there's additional pros, additional cons, please let me know because it might just be me. <laughs> but I, again, really like what I do. I don't think there's many cons to this job. It was kind of hard to come up with the cons that I did. But for the sake of this video, I am sharing with you all because I want you all to know what you're getting into, whether you are um, changing careers or if you're just studying to be an SLPA, if you are trying to decide whether you want to be the SLPA, if you want to be an SLPA, these are what I have kind of taken in and learned throughout my years of being an SLPA. So I'm very content in where I'm at. I don't think I will be going to school at least anytime soon to be an SLP. Um, I'm comfortable and I like what I do. Um, I like the direct therapy, creativity, everything. So I do hope you guys liked this video. And if you did, please give my video a like and please subscribe to my channel as well. It'll mean so, so much to me. I will catch you all in my next video. Bye.